Okay, so we are recording. Uh, this is the Friday, September 22nd, 2023 meeting of the Valley Green Energy Working Group. Um, we're happy to have Paul Gromer and Marlena Patton with us today from Mass Power Choice to get an update on our CCA application and then also to talk about the new DPU legislation. Um, Darcy, will you be kind enough to take minutes or yes, notes for today's sure. meeting? Thank you. Um, I do not have minutes from the um, August 11th meeting at this time, but uh, that just gives us more time to sort of move on and uh, capitalize on our time with Paul. So with that said, I'm gonna just move along on the agenda to our update on the CCA application. So um, I guess maybe Marlena, do you wanna give us an update on where we are or Paul or both? Um. Paul, did you want to start with that? Oh, I was going to, I was handing it to you. So, uh, well, we have these new guidelines from the DPU. And so we have been working to understand them. And what we're going to do is um, submit according to those guidelines, which um, means reorganizing things kind of behind the scenes a little differently than I had originally organized them. So I'm in the process of adapting the organization to the new guidelines um, behind the scenes. I think we're just missing one piece, um, which Stephanie, I think you know, which is the uh, certified copy of the vote for Pelham. That's the one piece I think that I know that we're missing. Yes, and I think Tom did get to us and said he's working on that. Um, so, I mean, we've given him several, we've outreached to him several times. I know that they were in the process, so I, you know, I'll just, it's just a matter of getting it <laughs> at this point. They know they're working on it. Um, I don't know how to make that move any faster. So under the, the guidelines, uh, under the proposed guidelines, uh, would we be asking for an expedited review or a regular review? Um, so under the guidelines, I think your plan would, would be in the um, regular review bucket. Um, but also just to amplify a bit what on what Marlena had said, um, the guidelines both sort of reorganize what the main documents would look like and then also reorganize and streamline quite a bit the supporting documentation that's required. The approach we've decided to take is to take advantage of the streamlined supporting documentation requirements. And so we're slimming down a good bit, the supporting documentations will, fi will file. So that's that's better. It's less stuff. It makes it the filing shorter, hopefully makes it easier to go through. So we're doing that. We aren't though taking the step of reorganizing the plan itself to fit the guideline requirements. And that's because, and I guess this is an, an issue for the group, but our recommendation is not to do that. And the reason is you're so far along now, you've already gone out for public comment with the plan organized the way the DPU used to tell us to do it. For you and for one other community that we're working with that's in the same place, Framingham, we've said, you're so far down the road, you've had a public review, let's file it, the plan documents the way they are, um, but just take advantage of these streamlined supporting documentation requirements both because it's too late to change. And also these guidelines are still just draft guidelines. Maybe they'll change a little bit before they're final. So it didn't seem prudent to reorganize everything to fit the draft guidelines when the final guidelines may be different. Looking ahead, you know, a few months from now when the guidelines are final, maybe we'll talk about whether it makes sense to revise the plan to meet the final ones. But for now, it seemed best to charge ahead with what you have. The plan as drafted since over time, we've made changes to address new requirements the DPU was issuing, not in these guidelines, but in orders and other things, which are all headed in the same direction. You're pretty much in line with what the, the substance of what the guidelines require. The differences now are more a little bit organizational, and then some very new things that only came out in the guidelines. But d just to recap, we think you should charge ahead with your documents as they are. We'll take advantage of the su 
streamline supporting requirements, but just get your plan in to the DPU and get it, get the review underway. Can I ask a question? Can we, if we, um, can we go ahead and submit everything that we have? It looks like we're just waiting on the one verification vote from Pelham. Can we just submit it so there's no question that whether which guidelines we fall under and then attach the Pelham vote afterwards as an addendum? I mean, they have so much to review to begin with. Are they, are they A, not going to start reviewing until they see a complete package? Or would they even notice that we don't have that vote in there? <laughs> you know, <if> it was <laughs> two weeks later, two weeks later, just sort of slip it in. That's an interesting question, which I is not something at least I had thought of. I don't know, Marlene, if you thought about this. I guess we had assumed that the getting the vote was an easy thing, and so it would happen quickly, and then so it's better to have it in from the beginning. But I guess if we can get everything else organized and ready to go, which we're we're working on, and we have everything with the but the vote, I guess we could we could certainly file it and then treat that as kind of an oversight and send it in, send it in later. I don't think that, I don't think that would be the end of the world if we did it that way. I guess, yeah, I, I mean, if it looks like we're not gonna get the Pelham document, like in the in near future, I guess we could consider it. I think my hesitation is though, is that the DPU likes to come up with reasons why, <clears throat> communities have created their own obstacles to getting approved. And they'll say things like, well, you submitted this, but then you wanted this, but then you asked this question. And um, I, I would like for Valley Green Energy not to be in a position where, you know, the DPU could use this as an excuse for their own slow action, <clears throat> because that's what they've done with other communities. They've said, oh, well, but then you asked this question and that's why we haven't been able to respond for a long time because we were thinking. Um, you would think it wouldn't be a big deal, I guess. I, I don't know, I, I if, if we if we have to, I suppose you're right, Paul, we could, I would say it wouldn't be the best thing though. The, the best thing would be to give them what they want. Yeah, my gut feeling, so I attended a meeting that was for, um, it was through the MMA and it was with um, community executives, but some staff were invited and Paul had invited me to attend as well. So it was with a legal, a legal team from DPU about these changes. And I, my gut feeling, I sort of lean more towards Marlena's response that I don't think we should do that. I think we should just have it all together. Um, cause I think in the end it might hinder us more than help us like getting it in without that isn't going to necessarily move it forward faster. Cause I think the, the vote is such a key piece. So I think that's kind of an important thing to have in place, but I will say that when uh, Tom made the original request, he made it to the town's administrator and it was actually the town clerk who responded and asked that all requests go, I think it was to her directly. So um, Marlena, maybe after this call or offline, you and I could just sort of um, touch base and follow up and try to reach out to that town clerk directly and see if there's a way we can sort of expedite that by going through that person. Um, and so we can maybe clarify if there are any questions and clarify what's needed because they may be trying to find any reference to CCA in any conversation. And as you clarified with uh, Northampton and Amherst, it only needs to be around, you know, during the vote the process during the vote, not like every time it came up. Well, right. I think they did. We do have the minutes. Hold on. I'm just checking for that now. I don't think the minutes are in question anymore, but let me just, um, just look and see. I think it's literally the certified copy of the vote that we're looking for, which is just okay. one single document, usually with a signature on it that says, okay. you know, notification. Um, I'd have to, I'll, I would need, probably it's best if I don't review this while I'm on the call with you guys, but I, I believe, I believe we did get some minutes from Pelham and it's just the, the vote. You okay. just need to print it out and sign, or like print it out, sign it, PDF it, and email it. Yeah. So that does not seem like that should be that arduous a task. So maybe though we could, um, 
follow up directly. I can, maybe I can call uh, at the beginning of next week and I'll just call, I'll, I'll start with the administrator and then call the town clerk to see if we can move that along. I, I feel like Tom is really bogged down in some family stuff right now. It's kind of an emergency situation. So I really don't want to burden him or make him feel stressed out with this piece. So I'm happy to follow up next week. Sounds great. Okay. Uh, did someone, I thought I saw someone raise their hand or have a question. Okay, no. Welcome, Catherine. Um, okay, with that then, let's move on to our next agenda item. And I guess, Paul, we'll let you just sort of take it from here to talk about the new guidelines and your draft template, the draft template plan, and then also the other information I think you were... Oh, I meant to get it on the, I did revise the agenda, but I think I put the wrong one in the packet. So um, you had mentioned another, another bill. Yes. Yeah, so absolutely. So I'll, I'll kind of jump ahead and then, and then answer questions as we go. So just to frame the discussions, there are confused, well, not confusing, there are two initiatives underway regarding the DPU's review of aggregation plans. On the one hand, there's a bill in the legislature that would greatly streamline the DPU review, require you know, no more than 90 days for review, and importantly, build in a lot of additional flexibility for cities and towns beyond what the DPU has been allowing. Um, the legislation has been filed. It's supported by a wide number of municipalities. And so one of the things I've offered to you is there's a sign on, you know, a letter of support going around that will be signed by many cities and towns. If your cities and towns would like to sign that letter, um, you, you're, you're welcome to, you know, we'd be, you're encouraged or I would encourage you to do so. It's not the end of the world if you can't, because there will be scores of, you know, signatories to the letter. So it's not critical, but it'd be wonderful to have your support. So that's one thing that's legislation. In parallel a little bit, as we've discussed, the DPU has issued draft guidelines for the review of aggregation plans, which would streamline a bit the process for review, speed it up. So saying that it would either be four months or six months, as opposed to the current three year plus that we've been dealing with. And it articulates a lot of the DPU's requirements for aggregation plans. So the reception to these guidelines has been, I would say mixed because it's maybe mixed at best, because while this faster process would be good and putting all the rules in one place would be good, the guidelines do also continue or even extend the DPU's trend of micromanagement of aggregation plans. So lots of little details, you know, you know, silly things like, well, you can't call your product green. You have to call it renewable. They're just like hundreds of little things that, you know, the state is telling the cities and towns that they can do. One of the big issues in the guidelines, which some, um, uh, some folks in the aggregation world have resisted is there's a lot more requirement for notification of customers in particular at the time of of a price change so the way aggregation works is when the program launches everybody gets a letter about it in the mail and they can either opt out or continue so then the aggregation continues but after two years or so you'll come to the end of your supply contract you'll enter a new supply contract the price will change historically aggregations would make an announcement of this but they wouldn't send everybody a letter the DPU now wants the cities and towns to send everyone a letter. And there's some um, uh, un unhappiness about that. That's something the DPU has been building towards for a long time. And, and it's in these guidelines now. And there are new forms that have to be sent, all sorts of other stuff. One, and so just like there's a letter of support for the legislation, there have been efforts to develop what would be joint comments regarding the guidelines. And I've been working with the other aggregation consultants and the Cape Light Compact, which is the biggest aggregation, to try to get a common set of comments that we could all file. And 
I think we've we've had some luck and are shortly able to send a draft of that. It's sadly complicated by two things. One is that what we've been able to agree on is at a high level of principles, not so much at very specific detailed recommendations. So I think what's going to happen is we'll have a very large number of communities sign on to a general set of comments at the principal level. And then maybe there will be a few others, you know, one from the towns we work with, one from the towns that the other, each of the other consultants works with on more matters of detail. Um, and then the second complication, sorry, this is complicated, <laughs> um, is that one of the consulting firms, Colonial Power, has taken kind of a different approach to responding to the guidelines. And we all agree, everybody agrees on the substance, but Colonial's approach has been more to encourage the DPU or to say to the DPU, these are terrible, throw them out, start over with something new. And while others agree with that sentiment, I'd say most of us feel that's not, as a matter of tactics, that's not the best way to persuade the DPU. They're very invested in these guidelines. They've been working on them for a year. They've been going, they made a presentation as about them, as Stephanie said at the MMA, they issued a big press release. You know, they're going ahead with these guidelines. And my fear is you tell them, you know, point number one, throw these away and start over. They're just going to stop listening at that point. So we're more in line with, uh, and we're 100% in line with acknowledging what's good about them and then making some recommendations for change. On one specific point, so that's big picture of difference. And then on a level of detail, there's another difference among the different consultants on the particular issue of all these additional notices that I mentioned a minute ago, a new requirement that towns have to inform, send a letter whenever there's a price change, for example. Some folks want to push back against that requirement and say the town shouldn't have to do that. My own view is that the towns really should embrace it, that you lose the moral high ground if you say we're against notifying customers. Instead, the towns, are, you should and are in favor of notifying customers. So I'm thinking it's not good to fight about that. That's a good thing to do. Let's fight about the other stuff, like, you know, little details about what you can call your products, or most importantly, how much flexibility you have to change the plan to deal with market circumstances or new opportunities. Uh, my view is it's best to push for that, give the towns flexibility, but not say, not fight about notifying customers, that notifying customers is a good thing. Let's just agree with that, but let's let's have flexibility in how we run the programs. Um, yes, perfect time for a question or for a break. So please. You're muted, Darcy. You can put it in the chat, maybe. Um, Stephanie, are you the host? Sometimes you can click on uh, their box and ask to unmute, which will bring up a, a uh, box where they can just click a button. Meanwhile, um, I would like to ask who from the various municipalities would be asked to sign these two letters if we decide that we want to move in that direction? Would it be the mayor? Would it be the, the Valley Green Energy Working Group, et cetera? Yes. So as far as the letter to the legislature goes, um, it's really whomever the towns would like to have signed the letter. So, and it, it really, it should be someone representing the city or town, but it could be anyone in different communities. Some have the mayor sign, some have the town manager sign, some have a sustainability, you know, staff person sign it could be whatever you're comfortable with and that's the way the letter would go because letters from the towns to the legislature in terms of the dpu comments it's a little bit different because there it's a regulatory proceeding typically filings in regulatory proceedings are filed by the the lawyer for the entity who's representing them in these kind of proceedings in general so 
For the DPU comments, what I'd ask would just be for your approval, but for me to sign as the legal representative for the communities before the DPU. And that's the way I'd be handling it with the other cities and towns that we work with as well. Um, Darcy has successfully unmuted herself. So go ahead, Darcy. Uh, I just was going to ask about the, because I'm not that familiar with the, the new draft rules, whether the provision to notify the customers re requires that they opt in or whether it's still assumed that they're in the program and they, and that they're not, they don't have to do anything to stay in. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a really good question. And that's a place where the, there's a little subtlety in the rules. So what the DPU's rule said is that for anybody who's in the standard opt-out product, you, you get this letter and unless you opt out, you, you unless you take action and opt out, you stay in the program at that product. If someone's in a voluntary product that they chose, either you know one optional 100% green product or a basic product, the rules are the little different. There, the DPU has said, if the product doesn't change at all, still the same amount of recs, for example, and the customer stays in it unless they say they want to leave. But if the city or town changes the percentage of recs, then the customer has to affirmatively opt into it again. And if they don't, it would go back to basic service. That last part doesn't make so much sense to me. I think they should go to the program standard product and we'd suggest that in the comments, but I don't, I'm not, I don't have much hope the DPU would agree. But I, as there is a way, and I think of managing this, and I think Joshua actually mentioned it on one of our earlier calls is just don't change the recs in the optional product. So you have a 100% product and you keep it a 100% product. And if you decide you want a 50% product, don't change the 100 to 50, just have a new product that's 50. And then you don't have to deal with this problem of people bouncing back to basic service unless they take an affirmative action. Okay, Catherine, you had your hand up. Yeah, I had the same question as Darcy, thanks. But um, isn't the, um, the default of a basic service um, at also at issue? I mean, to me, that's egregious. Oh, so that's a point where the guidelines um, were a little conf confusing, but the, the actual rule isn't, if I'm understanding where you're headed, it's not as bad as what people thought. So some people reading the guidelines, and this was not an unreasonable reading, it thought that what the guidelines were saying was the aggregation's basic standard product default product has to be the same as basic service no extra recs that that isn't what it said it, it, what they're saying is something a little different which is just that new customers when you sign up for a new account you start out on basic service and that's been the rule for several years now and then you get the opt-out letter and you become part of the aggregation unless you opt out mm -hmm. But the DPU wasn't saying that the aggregation's standard product had to be equal to default service. Um, even it, even for a, an expedited review? I don't think so, but the expedited review rules are a little murky and in my view, nonsensical. So I think there might be some way to get some improvement there. But I think what they said for expedited review was you can only have two products and one of them has to be the same as basic service. But I don't think they said this default product has to be the same as basic service, just so you had to offer that. Um, but I think one thing we would say in comments is, why in the world should you know someone with three products not qualify for expedited review? What is it about having a third option that makes the review process so much harder? You know, they're, 75 aggregation plans with three products. Why, you know, wh why is that a barrier to expedited review? It doesn't, it doesn't really make any sense. And I don't think it advances the DPU's objectives. You know, even if you embrace the, all those objectives, I don't think that's helpful. Yeah, that was what um, my one of one of my takeaways from that session was was that we wouldn't be eligible for expedited review with our application. So uh, for that reason. Um, I 
I do have the slides from that meeting that I'm happy to share, you know, and forward. Um, so I'll just forward them to the group so people can see them. Oh, if if I may, as a tangent, I someone else also sent me those slides. I did want to make two comments about them because sure. before you read them. So one is that DPU staff listed a whole bunch of things that make aggregation problem, you know, review cumbersome. Things like town's not actually answering information requests, you know, making a bunch of errors in their filings. There's a whole list of things. I'm pleased to say those are not problems that we've encountered. So it is true. Some of the, the other consultants run into this all the time, but I don't think you'll you'll have that with us. And then the other thing in there, and I apologize for burdening you with this, but the DPU is on this, this uh, is continuing to mention that um, consultants have something of a conflict because we get paid through the volume of, of sales through the program. And so they're suggesting that that would give us an interest to try to do things that would increase the volume in the program. But that's actually not true. I mean, both, you know, we've never suggested something to increase the sales to benefit us. And it's in part because that wouldn't be an honorable thing to do. But even more, that's not really in our financial interest. Our financial interest is to have a successful program and for us to continue to you to think we're doing a good job and we continue to work with us with you. That's the that's our motivation as to that's our financial motivation is to make the program successful, not to make it a little bigger at the expense of making it less successful. So the financially we're actually quite aligned, I think, with the goals of the, the program and the municipalities. I have a, another question that's uh, related to time frames. Um, is is it okay to ask it now? Um, sure. Okay, well, not hearing no, I, I guess I'll proceed. Uh, there's no time frame for um, uh, if the DPU disapproves of a plan, there's no time frame for re-review. And, um, and, and yet that is in the legislation that's been proposed. And, um, and also there's no time frame um, if a plan is amended and submits amendments for approval, there's no time frame given. So it could they could still take three years to um, to to uh, evaluate a reapplication after a denial or an amendment. Um, and so to me, that's a real weakness of the so-called streamlining effort. Um. Yes, fair enough, and I think a good a good thing to to comment on. Um, uh, I hadn't flagged on that disapprove. I hadn't noticed that disapproval point, but I think you're right about that. So that would be a good thing to say. Tom, welcome. Glad you could join us. Thank you very much. Sorry for the delay. No worries, not at all. Um, do you? I just want to check in real quick with you. We sort of covered this at the beginning, but I just want to circle back. Now that you're here, um, is there, I guess at this point, the only thing we're waiting for is the certified copy of the vote. I need to um, triple down on that, I guess. I'll, I'll, I I'll. don't have them yet, but I, I, I was afraid that they still hadn't come through. So um, I thought that the process had been initiated, but I guess we have to spend a, send a specific email to uh, uh, that one individual. So I, I, I will get that taken care of that's okay, probably yeah. holding, is that holding up the whole shooting match right now it sounds well it, it kind of is a big piece but it sounds like it has to go to the town clerk because i right. think when you had sent it originally all of this went to the town administrator but right. the clerk is the one who actually actually has to print it and certify it right. so i think the request needs to be in writing to her i think it's a her um so and if you need any assistance at all just let me know i'm happy to help follow up uh, thank you. I might uh, just listen in and, and multitask and get it done right now. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Marlena, were you about to say something? Well, I was just going to say that the, the thing that you're looking for is a, a document that says this vote occurred on this date um, with a certification from the town clerk. So it's um, 
it's not typically a multi-page thing. It's typically one page, although some communities it'll be a couple pages, but hopefully it's going to be a, a pretty straightforward thing that they know what the, a certified copy is and they can just kind of produce it for you. Do you need, and you don't need the originals, do you, Marlena? No, electronic is fine. Okay. Yeah, I think ours was just literally a half page and it's actually sitting on my desk right now, but it was only like a half page with a, an official seal. Um, okay, so circling back to, um, to this, I just want to understand, Paul, you've said a few things. So one is that it would be great if the municipalities could send a letter. Um, I'm imagining that I would want to get this to our town manager to sign um, supporting the legislation. And then the other thing it sounded like you were saying is that for comment on the proposed legislation that you would essentially be submitting that on our behalf with a group of other consultants. Is that what you were asking? Or yes, or just to, to frame a bit on the on the letter. So on the letter to the legislature, the specific request is, I guess it's for the town to sign, but the all I would need back is your statement to me that yes, the town would like to sign it and this is the person, this would person would be the signatory. And then the ideas that were, would be submitted to the let the legislature is that same letter but then with a long list of towns attached to it. So everybody on the same letter. So it seems like a big group rather than rather than individual ones. So it's just maybe a slightly easier task. All I would need if you wanted to sign is just let me know that and who. Um, and then uh, there'll be a process to get that in. On the guidelines, um, similarly, those would be would be from a group. Um, and there, though, yes, I would be the literal signatory, but it would be on your behalf. And so, what I I will be sending you haven't didn't don't have them to send yet would be those draft comments for you to take a look at, and then to decide whether it, let me know whether it's okay with you if I include you on the list of towns that are you know sub together submitting these submitting these comments. So, would it be Valley Green Energy, or would it be each individual municipality? I'd say it should be Valley Green Energy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you'll get those comments to us for review. Sounds like what we should do is once we get them, we'll schedule a follow-up meeting to discuss um, our feedback and then get them back to you, whether we're on board or we have additional comments we'd like you to include. That um, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. And what about other um, municipal entities um, writing their own letter? Is that not advised, or is it? Does it make the case stronger? Um, this would be to the. I, I think. I think the answer is the more the better. So if other, the, the you know if if, if other entities want to send something you know either to the legislature or the DPU or both, um, I think that's always good. Thank you. Always in my up. mind, yeah, in my mind, Adele, I, I sort of see the advocacy groups, you know, kind of doing their version of a letter, but I do personally would like to see us as a entity, as Paul suggested, that we send our comments that way. Um, but I that doesn't preclude, like, you know, your group doing a separate set of comments. Correct. Uh, the advocacy groups would be a very separate thing, but... Um... I was thinking of Carolyn of the Energy and Sustainability Commission, for example, um, and and whether it's helpful for for that group to send a letter um, or not. And um, do you? What was the? How long is the public comment period open? It's uh, I think until October thirteenth or something like that. I think for the for the DPU comments, um, it's the the deadline is October sixth for the initial ones, and then November sixth for the final. For the legislation, we are targeting um, the hearing before the House, which I think is October twelfth, and so looking to have 
just to give a day or two to get the letter together to know from people whether they wanted to sign on by October 10th. Did you say October 10th? Oh. Okay. Um, yeah, so the um, our next meeting is the 10th of October for energy and sustainability, Adele. Um, so we could potentially vote on that day. It's late in the afternoon, so it wouldn't be till first thing in the morning on the 11th, Paul, that you would get that. Um, I don't know if that makes a difference. Um, I don't think it does, but for the, for the, so, and with a letter to the legislature, sorry, it's hard to follow the, to be so clear about this. There, I think you really only want one signatory on behalf of the community. So, mm -hmm. and it's, and it okay. could be like some municipal official, whether mayor, town manager, or sustainability director, something like that, but one, one per town. If the Senate Sustainability Commission wanted to send a letter to either to the legislature or to the DPU, I think you'd want to send your own letter. And you could send, you know, essentially the same letter. But the idea of that main group one is it's it's you know one one entity per town and it's some you know sorry just one entity per town. Yeah. So we'd probably have to get the second one. I mean, because certainly from our committee perspective um, in Northampton, we wouldn't be able to get it except for that uh, November sort of second um, final um, phase piece. And then otherwise, I guess it would be either the mayor for your piece on the 10th or um, from one of our departments. Correct. That, that makes sense to me. We have an ECAC meeting next week that I could actually put this on the agenda and see if they'll, um, if they'll do their own letter, which I think they probably would. Darcy. Uh, just wondering are there are there two comment letters one the high level principal letter and one the detail letter or how does that work yes so um there are two big buckets one bucket has two has two sub buckets within it so for the legislature there's just one letter and that's the one we would hope the mayor or a, a municipal staff person would sign so that's to the legislature just one thing for the DPU comments, which is a separate path, different audience, um, there will be two. One is very high level, and there'll be a lot of communities signed on to that, you know, on the order of you know, 50, 75, something like that, that the high level principal comments. And then separately, there will be some much more detailed recommendations. That will be a smaller group, not still not a, insignificant, but that would be more on the order of 20 towns that we work with rather than the bigger, broader set. And the, the real difference between the, so that was, so unfortunately there are two things there. The, and the reason for that difference again, is that some of the groups want to push for changes that I don't think are realistic. And I, I actually think it's harmful to ask for, like, don't make us send letters to customers. That doesn't seem to be a helpful position to take to me. So we would, we, our, our, our specific recommendations would be limited to things where I think there's some realistic opportunity that the DPU could pers be persuaded and that by making the request, we wouldn't, wouldn't weaken the town's position by, you know, seeming like we didn't share the values of keeping customers fully informed about the programs. So do you think that, um, is there wiggle room as far as like, if, if we're, um, if we sign on to the detailed letter um, that says that we're okay with con, you know, the letters going to customers, is there a way to couch it in a condition that, that, you know, something to do with uh, not, uh, requiring that the customers have to opt in again or something like that because 
you know, somehow changing it over to a opt-in instead of being opt-out is really, would, could be devastating. Yes, absolutely. It, it would. And, and I think we're on the, I, I think we're on the same path here, which is I'm thinking that the, the detailed recommendation should be on the important things that go to the structure and success of the programs um, and sending extra letters to customers doesn't interfere with the success of the program. It's actually probably a good thing because customers learn more about the program and they can make informed decisions, more informed decisions. So I think that's, I think it's good to separate those things. And we wouldn't even have to say in the comments, you know, we support sending all these letters. We just wouldn't say, don't tell us we have to send these letters. We just wouldn't say anything about it. I think Darcy, um, so if Paul's gonna send us those comments, then we can schedule a meeting and review it. And if we have any suggestions or questions, we get them right back to Paul. Sounds good. I would just like to clarify um, the letter to, uh, to the legislature might be from the Northampton perspective might be in the mayor. Um, but in, in addition, other units of, of Northampton could write a letter to the legislature. Is that, did I understand that correctly? For example, the Energy and Sustainability Commission. Is I think that's where Paul was saying that it would be better to have one okay. individual that's what I'm at. That's sign. what I'm trying to clarify. Yeah. Exactly. yeah, that's the one. The letter to the legislature should just be probably the mayor. In our case, I would ask our town manager. Okay. You know, in Tom's case, it might be the chair of the select board. Correct. So that would be the person to sign that letter to the legislature. Okay. It's the other comment letter. So, and and Paul, correct me. I'm trying to follow here. So correct me if I'm wrong, though. So the comments. Paul is putting together with some other groups comments that would be sent on our behalf and all of his other clients. Um, and we would be reviewing those comments to see if we're okay with him representing us. Uh, but we could separately have other committees also send comment letters and they could use that, you know, that comment letter as kind of a you know, a, a launching point maybe, but sort of create their own language, maybe with a lot of the same content um, or points at least, but in their own language uh, to also send uh, separately. Am I I'm on track here? <laughs> you, you are absolutely. And, okay. and then you add this probably assumed and certainly outside groups. So outside advocacy groups, it's wonderful to have th those groups send send letters, your comments, and you know, saying whatever you want. I mean, we're all pushing in the same general direction here, and I think the more the better. And I'm sorry. So I want to be clear: the letter to the legislature that we would get our executives ostensibly to sign is the one that would be included with the long list of other municipalities. Yes. In fact, there'll be three lists. <laughs> oh, so okay. The letter to the legislature will have the longest list. So that just depending on how many, you know, towns it, decide they want to engage, that'll be, let's say, I don't know what, 75 towns will sign that one. So that'll be the longest list. Then there'll be the DPU comments that are at a high level. And that will also be a big, long list, probably not quite as long, but maybe, I don't know, 50. And then there'll be the detailed comments and that will be the shortest of lists, but it'll still be 10 to 20, maybe even slightly more. So we'll have like 75 to 150 and 25 will be the three, the three lists is my expectation. It just um, reflects how much alignment there is among the, the different towns and the different people who work with the towns. Okay. I'm sort of following. <laughs> I think I'm lost at that last point, but that's okay. We'll just go with getting your draft and then we'll go from there. Um, 
but it sounds like I, I think the what some of um, the questions regarding comment is that people just want to ensure that even if an individual wanted to send comments, they certainly can. Correct. So even if you're a member of this group, if you wanted to send your own separate comment, even outside of your own advocacy group, you are certainly free to do that. Okay, are there any other questions while we have Paul here? When uh, do you think we would be ready, assuming that Pelham uh, produces the document, when would we be ready to submit our application? Do you have a sense, Marlena? I'm just looking at the calendar right now. Um, or at least the 22nd. I mean, I think sometime in October, hopefully the first half of October would be my hope. So we still need to get the, um, we still have to set a filing date and get a docket number from the DPU on that. Right, Paul? Uh, correct. So, yes, we haven't done that till we had all the documents ready. Right. So we, we need all the documents that we're going to submit before we can get a docket number and set a filing date. Um, it sounds like we're close to that. So uh, then what we have to do is I have to finish reorganizing everything, which is its own little project. Um, and then they have to be sent over for approval. Um, Paul, how many affidavits have to be signed for this? I'd say one. One? Okay. So um, we'll have to pull all the files together put all the DPU, like organize them the way the DPU wants and put the DPU header on them, then package them up and send them over to you guys. And then somebody has to sign an affidavit saying that these have been prepared uh, under their supervision and they're accurate as far as I know, send them back to us and then we file them. So we have to bake in a little bit of time for their review as well. So um, if it's only one, then how, like, cause we have three communities. So wouldn't we have our three, wouldn't we have our, basically our clerks who would be reviewing them oh, to sign so, the affidavit? Yeah, so typically it'd be either, either someone like you, Stephanie, on behalf of the, the, the Valley Green Energy Working Group or conceivably someone else in the municipality. This is just um, the name, affid the term affidavit makes it sound like a bigger thing than it is. This is just a DPU administrative requirement that mm, when okay. documents come to them, in order for them to consider it in a decision, that document has to be attached to a person. It can't just be a document that came in. There has to be somebody who stands behind it. But all that stands behind it bit means is the affidavit says, these, this filing was prepared under my direction, so not by you, but you know by us working on your behalf, and it's accurate to the best of your knowledge. That's all you're not about, you know, not asserting to anything beyond that. It's just it, it's an important requirement. It's just administrative, and it will never be mentioned again. But it's just yeah. a requirement for the filing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's would would just that. fine if you signed it, Stephanie. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. I'd be more than happy to get that going. So yeah, so then I would send the, I would send the whole shebang, um, which is really, as I think we've talked before, it's just pulling together a lot of pieces that you guys have already seen. We're just putting them in one place, like minutes and letters and things like that. Um, so I'd send it all to you so that you could review it. So I guess I'm hoping, I'm hoping, you know, first half of October. I don't, that seems reasonable to me. Um, Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. So Tom, if you need any assistance too, I'm I'm happy we can follow up um offline after this meeting and I can if there's any way I can help. Um because I'm not sure which coast you're on right now. I I don't know what gave you that impression, but I will accept any offers, Stephanie. Thank you very much. So okay, yeah, we can. Uh, we'll touch base after um, after the meeting. I'll just give you a call if that's okay. Will you have a moment? 
after this meeting to talk? Uh, uh, I will. <laughs> I'm three to four and four to five. I might be done before. I, I might, Are you still in before four? If I call you at like quarter of four? Yes. Okay. I'll I be should, here. I should be free then. Okay, sure. Sounds good. Um, yeah, because if I have to physically go to Pelham and pick it up, I can do that. Okay. Well, so. okay. Thank you. Yeah, no, just, you know, I just, that way we can at least have it. So, um, so you don't have to, you can get it off your plate. Thank you. Okay, sure. So um, with that, are there any other questions or comments? We're kind of running out of time here and I don't, we actually don't have any public, so we don't have to worry about public comment, but. Everybody's good. All right. Sounds like we're so close. Go ahead, Darcy. Uh, I just have a question about the the deadlines for the comments. Are they? Are we also going to be commenting on the final draft, or just doing one round of commenting? Oh, so I think we'll need to see. Um, so there's right there are two rounds of comments. There's initial comments, and then a month later, what are called reply comments, where people can respond to what other people say. We'll have to see what other people say. Uh, I don't know if it will be necessary to file reply comments or whether the initial ones would be sufficient. And that November sixth is when the final comments is, are going to come out, or. Yes, so there'll be initial comments filed on October 6th, reply comments filed on November 6th. What happens after that is unknown. At some point, the DPU will issue the final version of the guidelines themselves. That will be sometime after November 6th. They haven't set a schedule for that, and they haven't said whether anything's going to happen in between November 6th and the final version of the guidelines. We'll have to see what they, unfortunately, we just have to wait to see what they say. So I have a question, Paul. If we're submitting in October and it's still under in their draft guidelines, we should not be, shouldn't we be adhering to the existing guidelines and not the revised because they haven't been finalized? Oh, for your filing um, of your plan. So I did speak to DPU staff to ask just this exact question. Um, and went over with them the approach we had discussed, which he was he was comfortable with, where we file your your plan, the plan itself as we've written it, which is largely in line with these guidelines, but not exactly in line with these guidelines. But get that in. But he said, with regard to the supporting documentation, we'd encourage you just to give us the stuff that's in the guide the guidelines ask for not that much longer list of things that we used to ask for because we actually don't want that much longer use of lists so, list of things so dpu staff is what was comfortable with the the approach we suggested okay great thank you for that clarification okay anyone else okay great um thank you so much marlena and paul so greatly appreciate all you are doing on our behalf and for all the information you helped clarify for all of us. Uh, really great. So I guess I'll just wait to get those comments from you. And um, I think I'll wait till I get them before we schedule the next meeting, if that's okay with everyone. So, uh, so that way we can factor in some time for people to review as well prior to the next meeting. So I will let everybody know when that is. So as soon as you can get them to me, Paul, that would be great. Um, really appreciate your time. And I think we're so close. I feel pretty confident we can get that document from Pelham sooner than later. So uh, I think we should be good to be moving ahead in October. So thank you so much. Um, I don't think there's any public comment. So our next meeting agenda will basically just be reviewing the comments. Um, and maybe just an update on where we are with our application. And um, I think that should be sufficient. And I will let you know, I'll follow up with everybody. All right, thank Wonderful. you all so much. Thanks, Stephanie. All right. Thanks, great to see everyone. Take care. Thank you. Too. you. Bye. Bye.